Okay, I got the uh, deep sump here. So, uh, looks like that is probably the one and a half. Um, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on here. It says first step clean it off. So, I'm gonna take some parts cleaner and just go in here. So I'm just gonna set it there and I'm gonna let that uh, dry out. Then, next step, take this thing off. So, you got this one. This is the big one. So this somehow came with a rubber washer, but I'm gonna use the copper when I get this onto the deep sump. This will still be my cap. And you can see that there's, this is a magnetic uh, drain plug, but I'll use a copper one, but it's got a ma it's got a little magnet on it So I can using the uh, crush washers and a New gasket set so that will all just get scrapped but uh, Initially, I didn't think I was gonna use a Deep sump, but I, then I changed my mind um, I had read various things saying if you're not going to be putting G-forces on it where the oil goes to the side, you're probably okay without the deep sump. But then I read something that's like anything that's over about a 1776 should have a deep sump. So I just decided I'll just use the deep sump. Oh, look at that. There goes my... Uh, And it smells like Permatex. All right. So I got to take out the uh, this little screen. So first, this gasket is toast, and that's like magic. Look at that. So this thing was brand new, so I'm going to just try to reuse it. There we go. I will just... I guess I'll replace this gasket. I mean, it's a paper gasket. It's probably fine. It's stuck to it. But I think I should probably just use it. Use it. Figure out which size fits two sizes. This one and this one. That one. And this one. This one's too small. So it's going to be this one. And then the part that has the irregular shape goes at the bottom so that the oil pickup is uh, reasonable. And Easiest thing to do, I have a, uh, so this is going to go on like this, and then, uh, okay, that seems very solid, it's just not quite in the middle, but I think you can just kind of hammer that. I don't think it's going anywhere though. Oh, perfect. I got a box wrench. I'm gonna tighten that. Great. Okay. I mean, you just don't want this thing to move. So. 
All right. Now, next step. I guess I have to remove all of these because uh, I'm gonna be using the um, Allen bolts that came with this. And I'm going to put blue Loctite on it. Yeah, this part's a little bit of a pain. You've got to put on, you got to double nut these suckers. Put one on. And then you put the other one on. And this one out. And stud is out. It's just tight enough that I can't do it by hand. Yep, this is what you do when you just don't care about these studs anymore. That. Well, as it turns out, this stud that I was mangling up is part of the uh, holder of this metal thing inside, so, you know, that's just another <laughs> unforced error on my part. But uh, I think I left it in a usable condition, so I am putting Permatex Aviation on here so as to not... It's probably more than I need but I don't want any leaks so and I'm leaving this one stud in the rest I'm gonna use the Allen bolts so it's gonna go like this Okay, roughly in the right spot. Then I've got different, um, whoops, down bolts here. Let's see if they're all the same length. They are not the same length, so there's two. All right, well, it's not pretty, but, whoops, putting some blue Loctite on here. And, been a pretty ugly job honestly to get the little screen to fit on there and then to get this and to get the layers of permatex required because you need to sandwich that screen and you need to put it on the other side of the sump but I finally I've yeah, got this so I have crush washers on all of these allen bolts and what I'm going to do is, I'm going to use my magnetic one, but I'm not going to use the rubber um, washer. I'm going to use a copper washer, just because I think copper crush washer is better. Um, every time I use rubber for any of these gaskets, they always either A, leaked, or got hot on the valve covers and got sucked in. The rubber just not my friend, so. Let's see, just do a final. So this doesn't have to be that tight. Just do it. I have permatex all over everything. 
But luckily, we know Rake Clean gets that stuff off pretty good. So I will be scrubbing it off. Okay, this is on. And now, with the, this guy here, which is my magnetic one, see it's already sticking to stuff. Washer here, which is kind of like a, almost rounded. Maybe I'll use this one. See how that one is flat and that one is like a thick one? So let's use the thick one. Why not? Although, so this one works. So put that in with the crush washer. Yeah, that washer really squished. I guess it's designed for that. All right, well, that is that. I'm gonna just clean this off a little bit. Move these tools, it's gonna drip a bunch of, it's going to drip a bunch of brake clean down onto here. A messy job and messy chemicals but said now I think it's ready to actually have oil put in All right. well, looks nice anyway That was, it never seems to go as well as I think it's going to. I mess a couple things up and then, then there's that one bolt which is attached to the metal thing on the inside that I kind of almost strip it. I don't know. I thought all those things would just come out. Anyway, that should be good. So that's an extra quart and a half. It's not as, it's not the two quart, which I had been considering getting, but this should, you know, give it just a little bit of extra. And now I can just put this thing back up. My next step was to you see here, I got my little mini fuel filter here in my elbow, which is going to come in. This is under the bus, and I'm going to test with this gas can with the, uh, uh, the hard line. So I'm going to do that tomorrow, and we'll do a new video.